Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. We're moving on to the next organ system in our organ failure series. I placed a poll over on Instagram and my YouTube community page asking you which organ system you wanted to hear about next. And it was a close margin, but the heart won. So we're going to talk about heart failure today, which I'm sure you know from clicking on the title. In this video, we're going to discuss chronic heart failure. And then next week, we'll talk about acute heart failure. Chronic heart failure affects millions of people globally. It is a very common medical issue. So heart failure is usually called CHF. The C is for congestive, not chronic. So congestive heart failure. And it affects approximately 26 million people worldwide. It is a very common medical condition. And due to rising health issues, the amount of heart failure patients is also on the rise. So first, let's talk about how the heart works. The heart is a pump, or you can think about it as two pumps, the right heart and the left heart. I can make another brief video talking about cardiac physiology if you'd like, but for the purposes of this video, you just need to know that it is a pump system and it also has an electrical system. When the cardiac muscle gets weaker, then the pump fails. So sometimes we'll call heart failure pump failure. There are many reasons why someone may have heart failure. There are ischemic reasons. This is typically from coronary artery disease, meaning that the blood vessels that supply the heart with blood, oxygen, and nutrients are blocked. Therefore, the flow is not as good as it used to be. So the territories of the heart supplied by that vessel are not getting the oxygen and nutrients that it needs, and it may suffer some damage. If somebody's had a heart attack, then that contributes even more damage to that area. Some other causes of heart failure are high cholesterol, hypertension, excessive alcohol use, certain infections, particularly some viruses, and valve problems. There are also several lifestyle factors that may lead to heart disease, such as smoking, as I said, excessive alcohol use, recreational drug use, obesity, a sedentary lifestyle. All these things can increase risk of heart disease. And of course, as I say in most of my videos, it's good to know your family history if you're able to because there are some dilated cardiomyopathies that are genetic. So what are some symptoms of heart failure? Many people start feeling short of breath. They'll particularly feel short of breath when they're laying flat and sometimes with activity. Patients may also have what we call exercise intolerance. That means that they're not able to do a lot of activity due to their symptoms. They might get excess shortness of breath or fatigue. Like I said, fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath, inability to exercise. They may also have what we call edema or swelling. Typically people will have swelling in their legs, but they can also have swelling in their belly as well from excess fluid. The excess fluid can also end up in their lungs or congesting back into their lungs, which is why heart failure patients have shortness of breath. A chronic cough and sometimes wheezing can be heart failure. Many people associate these symptoms with asthma, but they can also be heart failure symptoms. And finally, patients might also have abnormal heart rhythms or dysrhythmia. And they may not feel it at all, or they may have palpitations or just feel a little... Um, fluttering in their chest. So of course, if you have symptoms of any sort, you should go to your primary care doctor and get that further investigated. So how do we diagnose heart failure? Well, one of the things we do is an echocardiogram. This is an ultrasound of the heart and it shows us visually what the heart looks like when it's squeezing. The left ventricular ejection fraction or EF is used to see if there is a reduction in that function. There are two types of heart failure. There's heart failure with preserved EF and heart failure with reduced EF. So someone may have a normal ejection fraction but still have features of heart failure. That might be an issue with the heart relaxing rather than squeezing and that's called diastolic dysfunction. Or if they have a reduction in the ejection fraction, then that is heart failure with reduced EF which is typically the more commonly thought of problem when people think of heart failure. 
Then there are also a number of tests that are done if somebody has a reduced EF to figure out why they are in heart failure. So they might look at an EKG to see if the patient has any rhythm abnormalities. They may also do some blood tests. They may also do a stress test or catheterization to see if there's any coronary artery disease. A chest x-ray might also examine if the patient's very symptomatic, if they have any congestion in their lungs. And there's also some blood tests that we can do to see if the heart failure is decompensated. So moving on to treatment, how is heart failure treated? So one, if there is anything causing the heart failure, then we want to treat the underlying condition to prevent the heart failure from getting worse. The physician may recommend the patient do some lifestyle modifications such as increasing exercise and making some dietary adjustments. So several medications that a heart failure patient is typically put on to prevent the heart failure from getting worse and also to manage the symptoms. One of the more common medications used to treat symptoms is a diuretic or water pill. This helps take the excess fluid off of the body. Typically, people who have a very low ejection fraction are recommended to get a defibrillator to prevent sudden cardiac death. The heart muscle, when it is very weak and reduced, is at higher risk of having an abnormal heart rhythm. So this will help shock the heart back into a normal rhythm so the heart does not completely stop. There are also some surgical interventions such as replacing valves or doing a coronary artery bypass at cabbage if, if the coronary artery disease is the culprit. But there are also some advanced heart failure therapies, such as an LVAD, a left ventricular assist device, which is an implantable device, as the name says, assists with the left ventricular function. And there's also the option for transplant. But we'll talk about advanced heart failure therapies in a later video because these can be very complex. And next week, like I said, we'll talk about acute heart failure. So what can make the heart fail in a shorter period of time. Many times heart failure is something that happens over several months to years, but there are some things that can cause rapid heart failure. So we'll discuss those causes and the treatment for that in an upcoming video. If you have any questions about heart failure, make sure you leave them below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like seeing content about the critical care unit and critical illness in general, and I will see you next week. Thank you.